AI agents are all the rage, especially with OpenAI releasing Operator this past week. Today, I'm going to show you a tool better than OpenAI's Operator, which is completely open source, and you can start using it on your own local computer today. The tool I'm going to be showing you today is called Browser Use. I'll have a link in the description below so you can try this out yourself. As we scroll down their page, they have Web Agent Accuracy. So they show that their own is at 89.1% accuracy, and there is the ability to view the technical report to show where all this data came from. Computer use, which is from Anthropic, which I showed off on this channel months ago, has a 52% success rate, and Operator from OpenAI has an 87% success rate. So if you go to the technical report, it gives you information about the method, the results, and if the results matter, so on and so forth. So this is an open source piece of software, which means you can run it on your own local computer, which I will show you how in this video, but they also have a pro plan or a cloud-based version where you don't have to set up anything. It'll just work for a low fee of $30 per month. Set this up on your own local computer, which is the route I took. You're going to need a couple of things pre-installed on your computer. So you're going to need Python and you're going to need PIP, which is Python's package installer. Once you have both of those installed, the first command you're going to want to enter in your terminal is this git clone and then the GitHub address of browser use. Once you have it installed, you're going to change your directory into the browser use folder. In order for the browser automation to work, we need this playwright install. So we're going to install that. And this one will take a moment or two. So we have a nice user interface. So we're going to use pip install gradio. The last thing you're going to want to do is run python example slash ui slash gradio demo. Once it's running, you're going to see this web address and you can open it up in your browser. You're all ready to go. So at this point, you should now have this in your address bar. You can enter your API key. I have modified mine just a tad so I can run Claude. So our first prompt is to find the weather for the next seven days in Toronto and then put it in a pastebin file and then use that pastebin file and copy the link. So you can see here it is doing this itself. My hands are here out of the way and it is figuring it all out on its own. So it's loading the weather network with Toronto. It's looking at the temperatures for the next seven days. I don't know exactly how it's going to copy it yet, what it's going to do, but its job is to put this weather for the next seven days in a pastebin file and copy the link of the pastebin file itself. As you can see, the way this one works is kind of interesting. It puts numbers on everything because it's reading the actual HTML elements. So it's kind of an interesting approach to this problem. So it's here, now it's on pastebin. It's loading up pastebin all on its own and it's creating a new paste. You can see it has the numbers again, so it knows to go type into 12, I hope. We're about to find out. This is our first test. Paste forecast text here. Okay, so it knows where the text has to go, but that's not exactly the text we're looking for. Is it done? Nope. Oh, wait, yep, it's done. Okay, it's interesting. And then it closes the window. So. What's really interesting is the output here. You can actually see everything is done. So you can see all the output of everything it's done. And then if we go back, creates this agent history.gif file. So it actually shows you exactly what it's done for each step. So it said, hey, we're gonna visit a website and then we're gonna look at the website and extract the seven day forecast content and save it to a pastebin file. Uh, which it didn't really do. But nonetheless, it is kind of neat that it does have a GIF showing you what it was thinking of doing as it was doing it. Our next test, we're going to use Uber Eats to try to order a pizza to my home address, which apparently I now live at the, or in the CN Tower. So it is opening up Uber Eats all on its own. Again, hands are here. Here are my hands. I'm not doing anything. It's typing in the address I gave it. It is now searching. And I imagine if I gave it my login info, it would be able to log in and actually have the pizza delivered to my house. But you can see here it is logged in. It crave it, get it. It's labeled everything. It's color coordinated everything. It is, should be searching. There you go. It pulled up the search. It typed in pizza and what's it gonna do next? This is riveting. Could have had the pizza ordered by now, 
but that's not the point. It's just kind of cool and fun to play with, and they will get better quickly over time. So just think about where large language models were two years ago or last year. So it got to the point where it says, I have successfully ordered a medium <laughs> garden veggie pizza from Pizza Pizza on Uber Eats. Fully so ordered it, but it just kind of got to the window and then said, nope, we're done here. And it closed it. Give me a list of places I can visit in Japan and code a website using VS code.dev, which lists them out. So we're going to hit run task and you're going to see what happens here. Just going to bring that up so you guys can see a little bit better. And it is searching places to visit in Japan and it is Google searching that. So truthfully, I don't know exactly what demos to run to test this out fully. I find that it is cool and it's a really cool tech demo, but in terms of real functionality of it doing real jobs and real tasks, I just don't see it yet. As you can see, this is still pretty cool and it works well. It's gonna get stuck here. It won't know what folder to do. So I'm just gonna help it out real quick. Let's go to the downloads and we're gonna give it the browser use folder. So it has access to all the files there. Do you trust the author of these files? Will it select yes? Um, but yeah, truthfully, I think it's cool as a tech demo. In terms of real functionality, I think anything it can do, a human can do substantially quicker at the moment. But if you can find some use cases where you can have it run in the background, I think it would be kind of neat and it can be useful. I think right now this was the worst that it will ever be. It will get better over time. And as it gets better, you're gonna be able to make it run multiple tasks all at once. So it doesn't matter one task takes, you know, twice as long, three times as long as you would do it if it is able to do these tasks all in the background of your computer, you can have multiple of these running at once, speeding up your work process. So imagine you have 10 tasks running, even if each one was twice as long as before, you still have 10 things running all at once. So let me see if I can help it. I'm gonna hit save. It has an index file. Other than just Google searching places to visit in Japan, it didn't really do anything on that tab. So will it flip back? What will happen? I have no idea. It is doing this all on its own. If you guys have suggestions in terms of things you wanna see next time I use one of these AI agent tools, uh, leave a comment down below and let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are, what you wanna see it try, and maybe we can get it to do that in whatever the next AI agent tool that I create. But I think there are some pretty cool use cases for this coming up in the near future where you can have multiple of these AI agents running for you. So even though they're running slower than how you do a task, imagine many of them doing tasks for you all at once, making your work more productive. So maybe you're going on a flight. You can have a book the flight for you, the hotel, a car. It can start booking reservations for restaurants. It can start booking attractions and it can do all that really quickly relative to you sitting down doing each and every single one. So are these agents useful and great right now? No, not the best, but they will get better. I thought this one was kind of cool because it is open source and you can play around with it. And there's a lot of modification you can do yourself to make it work the way you want. What are your thoughts on AI agents? Let me know in the comments below. This one isn't technically free. You do need to spend money on API keys. I know some of you might complain about that, uh, but this is as close as you will get, especially considering that OpenAI is $200 a month at the current moment of this recording. So if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like on the video, comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are on AI agents. Where do you see them? Don't forget to subscribe. The mass majority of you who are watching this, and if you're especially here still watching, aren't subscribed. So click the subscribe button. It's free. It allows me to keep making content like this. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Subscribe to Franklin, join the ride in this journey side by side. Tech and wonder far and wide. Franklin's world come on.